Hello, everyone. Welcome to Southeastern 14. I am Blaine Gilmer covering SEC football as we are approaching the season. We are under the 60-day mark here in the countdown, getting closer and closer to the, the greatest college football league that we all love to watch, which is the SEC, which is growing next year. So this is the last year of 14. As we know, it will be going to Southeastern 16 before too long, but we are going to be evaluating 2023 running backs here in the preseason and counting them down in a series of videos here. We're going to start off with honorable mentions and number five today on the list, and then we will count down. Now listen, separating talented running backs that all of these schools in the SEC have the ability to go out and get is not easy. You have to take into account a lot of things. You have to take into account the offensive line that's in front of them, uh, sometimes sometimes that's almost to the detriment of these running backs. Some of these running backs could end up being higher on the list because they maybe some of these teams have lost a lot on the offensive line in front of them. But you know, there are also factors of just hey, how does that how does that offense produce at the running back position? Is there a lot of talent leaving that position there when it comes to the the running back position at that school? And how talented are the actual individuals that are there? Are they proven? Have they have they proven they can be that guy? Maybe some of these guys have had success being running back number two or number three or better having to step up into a bigger role this year. So a lot of these factors come into play. We would just like to say that we would love to have your comments on this video, whether you agree, disagree, all that. Comments are welcome. Go ahead and put them in there. Hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, turn on notifications for all SEC content here. Myself, Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, we're going to be covering everything SEC football all year long. So without further ado, let's go ahead and throw up some of the people who didn't quite make the list. These are the honorable mentions. Got guys like Jace McClellan. I don't think you can really – in good conscience, put anybody in that Alabama running back group there yet because you don't know who's going to step up and be capable of being that guy. They're having to replace Jameer Gibbs, but Jason McClellan is experienced. He's been around. How will Tommy Reese utilize him? There's incoming freshman Justice Haynes that is going to eat into his carries. Um, so there's, there's a lot of speculation about who ends up being the actual number one guy over there for Alabama, so I, I had to put him on honorable mention. Kendall Milton for Georgia, he's slated, like I said, a lot like Jason, Jason McClellan, talented, highly talented. Um, he's gonna probably going to be RB1 coming into the year. My question is, can he stay healthy? He's got to prove it that he can stay on the field and produce for Georgia. This is a big year for him. Very talented running back. Montreal Johnson at Florida had a great year last year following Billy Napier from Louisiana uh, Lafayette over to Florida. Uh, I just think there may be a more talented running back on that roster, so that he he makes the honorable mention here. Cody Schrader from Missouri, uh, you know, had a had a great year last year. Kind of came out of nowhere, just not quite, just not quite there to to make the top five yet. It could change. Missouri's going to uh, Eli Drinkwitz always creative over there offensively. And we'll see see how things turn out for Missouri. Jabari Small at Tennessee, a, a explosive back, a guy who really, really did a good job, especially early on last year for Tennessee. But just like with Montreal Johnson, I think there's a more talented back on that roster. Jaquavius Marks, Mississippi State, he's going to get more carries this year. He's going to get more opportunities in a pro style type system. So I, I like I like where he's headed. I like what he'll be able to do for Mississippi State, but it's going to be tough sledding for Mississippi State all around, so I think that's one reason I had to put him here. Jarquez Hunter, the only reason he is on this part of the this portion of the list and he is not in the top five is because we don't know how, if, when he's going to be able to play because of that suspension that happened with the video that got, that got leaked and put out there and, and there's a suspension involved, so... 
it's an unfortunate situation, but Jarquez Hunter is honorable mention. Branson Robinson at Georgia, uh, he's a talented guy, but he's got a foot injury. Don't know how much that's going to cut into his season. Uh, you could do that with a lot of those Georgia running backs, but just like Kendall Milton, we don't know which Georgia running back is going to be that guy. If there's one question on the Georgia offense, it's who is going to step up at running back and how healthy will they be at running back. And then same thing with LSU. You know, Noah Kane, I put him on this list, but I could have put uh, Armani Williams on there um, or Armani Goodwin on there. There's so many different guys that you could put at LSU and none of them have really kind of stepped up and taken that role. Thus, Jaden Daniels was the leading rusher for the team last year. So what running back will step up is the big question there. All right, guys. Now at number five, we got Trevor Etienne from Florida. I know Montreal Johnson had more yards last year, but every time I watched Trevor Etienne run the football, it was just so impressive. I mean, you're talking about a, a freshman in the SEC averaging 6.1 yards per carry has just the innate ability to, to, to slip tackles. Listen, one problem for Florida is they're losing four out of five from the starting offensive line last year. That was a real strength for them. But whether it was, you know, any time that they even even the limited catches he had didn't have a ton of yards, but he would he would make something happen when the ball was in his hands, um, whether it was catching the ball out of the backfield or whether it was it was running it. And this is a guy that I I did not think coming out of high school would necessarily live up to what his what his brother did at Clemson and now of course in the in the NFL. But he really worked on getting there to Florida, transforming his body a little bit, and he's a guy that he just has an innate ability to make people miss. He runs the football hard. He keeps his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, keeps his legs driving upon contact, uh, and he is a guy that I think Florida is going to need to take a big step uh, forward. He is talented as he is and as great as the freshman years as he had. I think he's going. Him and Montreal Johnson are both going to need to be that much better because Florida, like I said, they lost a lot of the offensive line. They don't have a lot at the quarterback position. They have nothing at the receiver position. So Trevor Etienne and Montreal Johnson are going to have a lot on their shoulders when it comes to this offense for the Florida Gators down there in the swamp. I like Trevor Etienne a lot. He comes in at number five on our list because uh, you know just having the performance that he had. Last year, as a freshman, 118 attempts, 6.1 yards per carry on those attempts and added six rushing touchdowns on the year. I think that that is a very impressive mark, and I think he will improve upon that in year two down in Gainesville. Now, we if you want to see who is number four on the list, make sure you subscribe Make sure you hit that like button, turn on notifications because we will be putting out more videos where we do number four and number three in our next video. Uh, again, leave your comments. Let us know what you think about who is on the honorable mention list, who is number five, and we will catch you guys next time here on Southeastern 14 to discuss more of the 2023 preseason running back top five countdown in the SEC. We did honorable mention and, and number five. We'll do number four, number three next time. I'm Blaine Gilmer. We'll catch you guys next time here on Southeastern 14.